All systems seem to be a go. I think it's time to start the ship. Oh, Canette, can you hear that? Hear what? The engines are starting to rev up. <laughs> and when the engines start to rev up, that can only mean one thing. It's time to blast beyond! Blast Beyond from the studios of KCOS on the campus of El Paso Community College. Welcome to Blast Beyond. Are you ready for an adventure? I'm Captain Rob, captain of the Blast Beyond spaceship. And on this spaceship, we zigzag through the galaxy, having adventures and learning new things, all with the help of Commander Alba in mission control. Dr. Ron Wagler from the University of Texas at El Paso. Oh, there he is. Woo. Okay. Hey, hey Dr. Rob. Wagler. All right. I, I, I've been out looking for roaches all over the Earth. Well, you don't have to go back to Earth. Apparently, Ooh. Cosmos. Look on the lower decks. Oh, yeah. There they oh, are. Yeah, I've been know. down there. I didn't. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, oh. There. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Is, are they? Do they look like oh. this? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Okay. Boy, it didn't take yeah. long to find those. All right, Dr. Skateboard, what exactly are we going to be learning? And if you could throw in what a fulcrum is, I've never heard of that, even though one of the cadets says she does. Okay, well, when we were talking about simple machines and you were working with the seesaw and designing it for the playground, one of the things we saw is that you would use what's called a lever, that's what goes back and forth, and the fulcrum, which was the triangle, the pivot, Oh. around which it uh, the lever moves. Oh, then so on this picture, the kids were right. This is the one they picked out would work the best. Right. And so this little triangle right here is the... Fulcrum. This is the fulcrum. Right. And you're just saying that a fulcrum can be anything on which the thing goes back and forth? Right, and this is called a lever. So the lever, uh, the fulcrum is the fixed point around which the fulcrum moves. And like on a seesaw, it moves like this. On a skateboard, there are actually a couple of other levers. There's a lever in the front on the nose huh. and a lever in the back. And the trucks, these, these things, act like fulcrums. So you can, in effect, move back and forth. Oh, wow. And that's how you do things like this, where you're moving on the fulcrum of the skateboard, where the nose and the tail act like a lever. I never thought about that. So a fulcrum doesn't have to be a simple triangle. It can be a set of wheels like this that you just go back and forth on? Right, because it's a fixed point around which a lever can move. I've learned a lot about boundaries. I, of course, don't have to obey them. I'm chief of security. But I did, however, uh, learn something. Dr. Upreti, are you still on board the bridge? Dr. Upreti? Yes. OK, here she is. Now, Dr. Uprete, let's talk to Deb Vaughn and go through the top three things about boundaries. Why is there another woman on the bridge? Well, she's a professor and she's teaching us. Oh, a professor. Right, I'm so right. impressed. Yes, yes. Now, it's important to like the captain, but are, do, do we have to be in my cabin at night, Dr. Uprete? Is that a no? I would say that if Captain Rob is telling you that his personal boundary is that he sleeps in his cabin by himself, you need to respect that, Deb Barr. But who's going to protect him from the evils of the world and in space? <laughs> well, he is the captain, and he is already protected on the ship, and he has already told you that he would like you to respect his personal boundaries. So your job now is to listen to what he said and do the best you can to honor his personal space. You guys did a great job of learning how rhythm is mathematical, but it turns out that pitch, or the frequency of a note, is also mathematical. Oh, really? Yes. So, because this is how sound is made. There's, there's the frequency the, the, of the string vibrating in the air. Now, this string is free to vibrate between the bridge, this white piece here, not, not the bridge where we are here, and the nut, which is not the Cosmo, um, uh, where the string is, is here. So the bridge and the nut. <laughs> Did you, you hear that down there, Cosmo? <laughs> No! So. It's the nut on the bridge. <laughs> Wait a minute. That would okay. be you! Okay. So what I want to ask you cadets is, 
what happens if we shorten the length of the string that's free to vibrate by pressing the string down so it hits this metal bar called a fret and, and makes the string shorter and shorter? What's your prediction? Is the note going to sound higher or is it going to sound lower? Okay, What's so your you're, prediction? You're saying bringing the nut in, shortening basically right. the length. Does the, does the pitch go higher or does the pitch go lower? Hmm, very interesting. Who said higher? How many higher. think higher? Higher, how many think lower? Okay, most think higher. What Let's it, what see. Shows? Let's find out. Oh, wow. Do, do that one more time from the top, would you? As you bring the nut in toward the bridge. I'm shortening this. Now the string is only vibrating from here to here because it's contacting this fret. Oh, the So pitch the shorter goes. the string, the higher the note, the higher the pitch of frequency. We're going to stand with our arms by our sides. Okay. And we're going to inhale and we're going to reach up. And we're going to breathe out and we're going to dive over. And we're going to inhale and we're going to look up. Uh-huh. And we're going to exhale and we're going to fold over. Now we're going to put our hands on the floor. We're going to bend our knees and we're going to step our legs back. So you make a triangle, and this is called downward facing dog. Essentially what we're going to have with the high voltage there, we're going to have artificial lightning. Artificial lightning. We're going to have a spark that jumps about this far, which is maybe up to a half a million volts. Now, when lightning is happening, what is physically going on in a lightning bolt? Right. Now, in a lightning bolt, it's not radio frequency energy like this, but what happens is you're actually stripping electrons off the air molecules. And so the electrons are moving one way and the ions, the positive ions that are left are moving the other way. Wow. So, so we have a, a rapid flow of electric current in a lightning strike and we're going to see a miniature version of that right here. Yes, we are. Okay. Would you like to dim, dim the lights, Yes, let please? me uh, bridge lights. Okay. It makes a loud noise, but don't be scared. All right, I'm sort of scared. Can we count? Three. Three, two, two one. one. Oh!